So I just got this working like five minutes before. We'll see if it still does. Alexa, trigger windows. Sending that to it. <laughs> no. I'm pretty excited about it. So what is this? <laughs> so it's this special film I found called PLDC with a little bit of current. So we can still run it off grid and everything. It goes from transparent to opaque. I also wasn't happy with a lot of the smart home stuff. And I realized that, I mean, it took longer than I thought it would, but I can just use that or any other point to then talk to a Raspberry Pi that's on the other side of the wall, hooked up to relays that control everything. So the same setup, Alexa, Trigger lights. Sending that to it. Alexa, trigger fan. Sending that to it. So rather than having to get different smart devices for everything, because it's so small, I just run wire. I just, when I build it, ran wires to control all of this. You'll notice there's no switches on the wall. As I was building it out, I was like, I can probably just, you know. It's not, it wasn't that much more complicated or that much more time to just make it so that I can control everything from little computer that then it's your phone or a web browser or Alexa. Trigger fan. Sending that to it. I mean, it's kind of goofy and just for fun, but you could imagine this being useful for like, you know, if I want to limit my solar gain during the day, I could have shutters that adjust in response to like a $2 light sensor interiors reading. And these are all things that you can already, I mean the windows I haven't seen done quite like this, but these are things that you can buy individual devices to do. What's cool for me is that it's, especially with a tiny house, when you stop worrying so much about the cost per square foot, and you ridiculous shit like a tin ceiling, when you think about it as, oh, this isn't that big of a house, and if I want three or four smart systems, I might as well just spend the 20 to 40 hours to learn how to glue these together with open source things. <laughs> I mean, it's basically like a container-based smart cabin. <laughs> it's still being built, like <laughs> chaos going on here. So the idea with this one was to make it like a showcase, like the ridiculous ceilings and everything. Yeah. And then this is basically, these doors will shut. So this is basically like the utility closet. It has working now, water tank for incoming water, super minimalist gray water, gardening style bucket that gets emptied outside every couple days. And then the smart part is just this relay board and this Raspberry Pi, very precariously mounted in a screen because stuff breaks to diagnose. And basically it's just a little computer that runs the whole house. Instead of flipping an LED on and off, it turns an AC switch on and off. And this is like $20, this is like 40 instead of buying all of these devices that don't really work for individual elements of a smart home, this is just, you know, hack it together. The Raspberry Pi connects to this little thing. This was like five or $10. This guy is just relays. Relays let you, with a small computer, control a large amount of voltage. So I can't hook up directly AC to that to be controlled. That's the whole purpose of this. And then these wires in between, they're more of a mess because I just hacked this together recently. But all that these do is take a signal from the little computer and flip it via a relay to control a large amount of voltage. So the fan or the windows or anything else. And then the Raspberry Pi is running software that just listens for a command from whatever interface you want. If I hit the light switch command, it'll flip the light switches. And it's not to not use any corporate device, it's just to have choice and to not need to buy a $400 connected bathroom fan. Instead, you use a normal bathroom fan and figure out how to program a little bit. So you could plug about any device into this. I mean, this is universal. Yes, each light outlet and each pair of power outlets are individually controlled. I just ran extra wire when I built the house. That's why the mess of wiring all over here. So each one of those out pairs of outlets, that was probably overkill. The lights were probably the right. <laughs> and because it's digital, it, it can be whatever. So it gives you a lot more control over what, I mean, it's basically like a smart container house now. And we really like this design for the bed with the projector separating it. That will become smart as well. This is a powered projector. So basically there'll be maybe a wire, probably just a Bluetooth link to it, where then that will also be controlled via whatever. These windows, we can also actually project onto these, but we probably won't bother. The idea is that by having open space, well, I guess you can't really tell with them shut, but by having visible space on both, I really like, I'm just gonna keep doing that over and over. Um, you can see all the way through the container, so it doesn't feel as restricted as some of the other designs. What else? Small bathroom area. This was like a hundred dollar 
horse trough thing. So it'll be a little tight. We'll see. I'll probably add a shower here as well. Can you fit in there? Can you see? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I haven't actually tried it yet. Um, with a lot of this, it's so much easier at this point, like because we're experimenting with multiple units, to just order a couple. Actually, this will be fine. It'll be a little tight. It's called a Japanese bath. It sounded way cooler before I built it. This is plumbed. There's on-demand water pressure. The water heater, I'm still experimenting with electric versus gas. I'm trying to do this one entirely electric so that I can have it just be solar panels and not need propane this time. Induction burner, convection oven work quite well from that. And same design on the fridge where it's a little circuit added to make it work as a, as a refrigerator rather than a freezer. I haven't opened this in a while, this might be. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. I've been out of town for a while, so we've got some, <laughs> some, there. Okay. some nastiness. This is, if you look at best sellers under RV equipment, boating and camping, you can find good candidates for things that might make sense in your system. So this is best selling $70 camping toilet. It should be okay to open it. It's a pump to flush and then you empty out this bottom chamber. And of course we don't use it because that's by far the most controversial part about this. And you have to go to the bathroom and you just use this. You lift the seat up and then when you're done, we just open up this bucket and pour the bucket of char to cover everything. So with this, rather than having it feel like quite as Blade Runner-esque as my orange and blue one, I found some tongue and groove wood paneling that was pretty cheap to use to coat the walls. So this has traditional two by four framing uh, and then R13 insulation throughout. So with the outer shell, it's probably like R18 or something at least. It's well insulated enough that our on-demand electric heater turns off for 90, 95% of the night. The bed, dog den below. This is a DIY, of course, air filter. It's a little HEPA furnace filter that really needs changed at this point, attached to a little fan. Some professor put out a cool how-to on it and you get the same filtering benefit from that as you would from a thousand dollar indoor air quality filter. E-bike test rig in progress. Forklift that we're slowly fixing, as you can tell by the cobwebs all over the place. But yeah, we're realizing that it makes sense to just experiment with several different options at the same time because we have enough other demo units being built around here that it's not just us benefiting from it anymore. It's we're able to learn, I think, a lot faster than we were before. People want to work on their own, but it's a lot slower than people think. So people are definitely learning. Like, Jesse's got his framed, um, this one's coming along slowly. And on one hand, it's frustrating that things go slowly, both our own and other people's. But on the other, it's slow compared to cranking it out in a week. Compared to traditional housing, this is really fast and really cheap and really effective, right? Um, both in terms of overall cost and time and in terms of the overrun compared to what people estimate. Sean and Kate did a great job on that wall of their container. It adds a lot to have it in wood. They just cut out the metal on the whole thing. It looks really cool. I wouldn't have thought it would look good or done it that way. They did, and that's like definitely something we can learn from. Making that one smart has been the main so upgrade you here. You cut into the side. You didn't sure. really cut much, right? No, it's pretty simple. Because we got such a big window and such a large all glass door on the other side, it was just the two cuts saved us some time. And I haven't even painted this one yet because it's only lived inside so far. Total cost on this, including all the ridiculous smart systems is gonna, and all the off-grid systems is gonna be under 12,000. And I mean, it took some time for one-off things, but to build another of these is 100 to 120 hours of work. It's not highly skilled work either. The plan is that we can do a variety of things with it. It can sit in a warehouse like it is now, or it can go on wheels, or it could go on a barge or it can be stacked atop other containers. So like a land, sea and air approach where this is a unit and we can reconfigure it in a variety of ways because it's a, a shipping container, stress on the shipping. Like we have pretty much all of global infrastructure built optimized around moving and stacking these. I need to add a party mode. That'll take like five minutes to build um, <laughs> where it just strobes everything. You could also have it like shade as it senses motion, like as you walk by from one end to the other. And it was definitely like, that was definitely a splurge element of this. I mean, the window covering's almost as much as the shell of the container, which felt kind of stupid to be honest, but it's like, it helps make the point that, you know, we can build this stuff. This is, it's not like average kitchen renovation, $20,000 cost. 
it's like you know fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for like all the equipment added plus the extra wiring to make this just everything is controlled from anywhere basically alexa trigger lights sending that to ift part of my goal with this is to help people realize that it's not sending about a it. sacrifice it's not like a burlap green it's about getting better versions of things and it still looks a little weird and obviously it's messy, but like I have a smarter home per square foot than any of my friends who spend way more money on their apartments or homes. And it's infinitely more adaptable and it'll be done at minimal cost. She got angry. <laughs> With this one, I really want to stress that it's about more options and more control over your environment, which definitely still looks a little weird, but for my taste, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.